Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Ben Thompson. I'm excited. Today's episode of the podcast will feature a professional colleague and good friend of mine, Steve Egan, who is an audiologist and head of sales development at Eargo, which is a company that specializes in hearing solutions. Steve, please introduce yourself. How are you doing today? And give us some context of your career as an audiologist and how it ended up of you working as the head of sales for a year ago. Sure. Uh, and uh, thank you, Ben, for inviting me uh, to be a part of this. You know, it's, it, it's been great to get to know you over the last couple of years and see the growth in pure tinnitus and uh, what you're doing for consumers out there and, and people that are suffering from tinnitus. So I'm, I'm thrilled to, you know, to be a part of this. You know, my, my career as an audiologist has been kind of an, uh, a different one. It's definitely not followed the traditional path that uh, people that get into the profession, you know, go. So I've, I've been in the industry for 31 years. Um, I'm an Ohio native living in Nashville, Tennessee. And so, you know, I got my master's degree in audiology from Ohio University longer than it feels weird to say three decades, but three decades ago, I, I got it. And um, I practiced clinically for about 10 years. I did audiology originally at the beginning to satisfy a music um, habit that I have. And that's why I'm in Nashville is that I have this uh, avocation about playing guitar and music and I stay busy in the Nashville music scene. So audiology has allowed me to pursue that in, in addition to providing, you know, income for my family and so forth. But after practicing clinically for 10 years, I found that I didn't particularly like, you know, the diagnostic, the clinical side of the industry. And what really, you know, struck me is fascinating and, you know, kind of to scratch the creative itch that I've always had as, as a musician was I found that this dilemma of why people when they were confronted with a solution to solve their hearing problem, wouldn't do anything about it. And so when I was dispensing hearing aids through the, you know, ENT practices and in retail settings in my 10 years, I never quite understood that. So there was an opportunity that opened up here in Nashville back around 2000, where a gentleman started a direct-to-consumer company called Hearing. And at that time, the business model was to provide transparent pricing and educational information to the consumer, have them reach out to Hearing Planet where we would act as a concierge service. And then we would refer that client to a local hearing professional in their market that our company had screened and vetted. And it turned out to be very successful. But what, what that did for me is I took a leap of faith because I was employee number three that got hired. And several years later, we were purchased by one of the large, uh, the big five hearing aid manufacturers. But what really fascinated me about that whole journey of, of being with Hearing Planet for 12 years and then working for the parent company that purchased us was that it helped me understand, do research and, and really dig into the consumer journey about, you know, when they, when someone first recognizes that they have hearing loss we all know, and Ben, I know you know this as well, that there's a period of, you know, five, seven, eight years that go by where people put up with hearing loss. They're asked, they ask spouses and friends to repeat. They change their positioning at restaurants. They turn the TV up. They do all of these things, but yet they, they put off getting hearing aids. And so I wanted to be a part of a movement to, you know, because I did get into this field because I enjoyed it to begin with, but I wanted to do something a little bit more altruistic that, that really helped you know, grow the market that would take first time users and speed up that seven year journey so we could get people to experience better hearing early. So that's kind of where my journey has always been focused is I've just been fascinated on the psychology of the consumer and what we as audiologists and hearing professionals can do to move them forward. So I, I did that for, you know, so many years in the Sonova world. And then coming up on five years, um, Ergo recruited me to come uh, work for them. Um, they were building a really unique direct to consumer business business model and a unique hearing aid from the ground up. And it was something that I found very fascinating and um, where I felt that my skills, um, you know, could lend a hand. And so here I am, you know, you're doing well and, and I'm doing some things different, but still in, in the hearing healthcare field and, and still playing music. Well, side. that's, that's the best. <laughs> you, you're, you're working and you're playing and you're in Nashville, right. which is a great city. I've been there as we spoke about just before the podcast, fun place to be. My question for you right here is you've been with Ergo through different technology developments and how often have they been releasing new technology products on my YouTube channel? I've reviewed the Ergo Neo Hi-Fi as well as I'm working on the Ergo 5 
So how often are they improving the technology, the engineers, and what are the normal, what is actually happening? Is it getting smaller and smaller? Uh, and what else? That's a really good question because, you know, in working in the traditional um, hearing aid manufacturers, you typically see major, major changes to a platform and, and to uh, shapes and sizes of the behind the ear devices, you know, maybe every three years or so. What Ergo has done since I've been here is our engineers have been very aggressive, you know, from developing the digital, uh, the DSP or the platform that powers the hearing aid to the shape and the size and the charger. Um, we've come out with something every 12 to 16 months. We're coming out with a new um, premium model. And, um, you know, it can take on everything from, you know, the form factor, which is the actual shape, how the hearing aid looks and fits and feels in the ear canal to how the hearing aid responds to different noise environments and so forth and how it provides better high frequency emphasis without feedback. You know, the big thing for us is challenging ourselves on how we can use our charger. And for anybody out there that's ever seen Ergo hearing aids, all of our devices are rechargeable. They fit completely in the canal. They're virtually invisible. And so to take our charger and to utilize more of that outside of just recharging the hearing aids, we've really gone into the space of, of you know, developing an app that gives the user of the, our devices more control. So that's been a big thing for us is to allow people to personalize their devices. You know, we do make them smaller. The new Ergo 5 is about 10% smaller than our previous version. A big development for us was allowing people to purchase their Ergo devices, put them in their ear, and then do a hearing screening through the Ergo app that you can put on your mobile phone, finish the screening, and then program the devices or set them according to the hearing loss that is picked up through the hearing screening on the app. And that's really worked well for this version that's coming out. And we're already working on Ergo 6, which we hope will be an early 2022 uh, release that'll have some upgrades as well. So we're pretty busy and active on that front. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I put my hands on it. It's definitely a unique product. And to have something small that goes in the ear that doesn't occlude and block the ear is unique, no doubt. Right. What was your experience with that? I mean, it's um, for a professional like us, it's almost hard to believe it, but I've worn it. I've turned it on. It does what it expects to do in terms of small in the ear, virtually invisible, yeah. and it does not occlude the ear. An amazing engineering feat, right? Well, yeah. And I, I think there was always, I have to admit that when I when I came here and started working on the, you know, and putting together the customer facing team with other colleagues of mine, is that we really wondered, you know, is this going to deliver what it says it's going to? Because in the traditional industry, when you make a completely in the canal, virtually invisible hearing aid, it's made out of a hard acrylic material that's, you know, there's a mold taken of the ear. And the biggest problem that we deal with is that plugged up feeling that you mentioned, Ben, called occlusion. And it makes the voice echo inside the head and it's very unpleasant. What ergo has been able to do through the, you know, the engineering and the, the way that our uh, palms, we call them flexies and, and tetra palms, they all have different names depending on the model, is they do leave the ear canal open so natural sound can enter the ear, but have the microphone in the digital process or emphasize the speech frequencies more. So yeah, it's been, it's been fun to be a part of it. Um, one thing that you know, we're very customer centered organization and we do a considerable amount of focus group testing and interviews and trials before we release anything to market so that it does deliver, you know, what, what we want it to. And, and then we're always iterating as we go. So, and you guys have an online hearing screening, which we others, do. others may call an online hearing test. We've been working on, on our own side of things for launching an online hearing test, online hearing screening. What have you found in terms of the compliance with an online hearing test and how useful is it? Does it, what does it do for your team of professionals and what does it do for your patients or customers? Really, really good question. You know, the number one question that we would get at Ergo when I first started back in um, early 2017 was we would hear from consumers and they would always want to know, well, how do you know Ergo is right for me? You know, because you don't necessarily have to have a hearing test, you know, to show us that Ergo is right for you. We do, we have some screening questions over the phone, but we knew that we weren't satisfying a large percentage of people that were calling us that wanted a more traditional hearing testing or hearing screening experience to feel comfortable moving forward with that purchase. So we, we started doing various iterations over the last couple of years of different things. We tried some different uh, competitors and, and makers of, of an online hearing screening. We actually found a company uh, called Clementine that was out of the Netherlands 
in late 2020 uh, during the pandemic, and we were getting ready to go public. We found them. We really liked their user platform. That was very open. They were um, a good company to work with. They allowed us to customize. They could move quickly. And th- what we're looking for in a hearing screening at Eargo is we know that we can't diagnose hearing loss. I don't know of anybody that can put a hearing screening up on a website and diagnose hearing loss because there's so many variables about heads, the kind of headset, the user's capability on adjusting the volume on their device and so forth. But what we have found and what our consumers like about using the Eargo screening is that it gives them a sense of comfort. And the way that we've built the algorithms that look at the outcome of the screening is that we are simply trying to tell somebody that Yes, you are within the fitting range that Ergo should help you. Okay. And, and if you're outside of the range, what we do is the hearing screening will tell you that you're outside of the ideal fitting range for Ergo. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't wear them. It just means that we have to have one of our audiologists or hearing instrument specialists then reach out to the individual and do a little bit more digging and qualifying over the phone. Yeah. And and, and it probably and, and, and it probably means they should get an in-person hearing test if they haven't already. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and we're the first to tell people that because we don't want to create a bad experience, Ben. You know, and I don't think anybody does, whether it's it's pure tinnitus or phonac or anybody else that has an online screening on their website. It's really there to give consumers more of more of an interactive experience when you're looking at a direct-to-consumer model. And um, so we want to give people that comfort level and then give our team of professionals an opportunity to interact. And if we have to recommend that somebody gets a hearing screening locally, you know, then we definitely make that recommendation. Yeah, it's a very helpful tool and something that someone can do within 10, 15 minutes from the comfort of their own home, from their smartphone, through headphones. Yep. It's very low friction, as we say. There's, there's, it's very easy to, to go ahead with it and try it. I wanted to ask, in your opinion, will Medicare provide a hearing aid benefit? <laughs> very loaded, very loaded question. Man. So, you know, for, I don't know, 15, 20 years, it's been rumored that, you know, Medicare is going to cover hearing aids, provide, you know, time. It was a $500 benefit. It's been introduced so many times over the years. What I'm hearing through our insiders is that this stands a very good opportunity with, I think it's part, if I remember correctly, it's part of the infrastructure bill or the um, Build Back Better program that the Biden administration is trying to pass and get put into, into law. So there's a number of things that they're trying to do, but hearing aid coverage is included in there. And word on the street is that it will come up for a vote ahead of the 22 midterms and um, that it does stand a reasonable chance of passing. That being said, we've been told that forever, um, that, that that may happen. So it can only help. I feel, Ben, that you know, if it passes, that people have some financial reimbursement or some financial incentive to move forward with a hearing aid purchase. You know, If you look at other countries that provide some stipends like Canada and over in Europe, you know, it does show uh, that more people will move forward if they have some financial help in, in their purchase. That being said, I still think as an industry, we're overlooking the biggest part, which is alleviating stigma. But that's, that's I don't know what you think about that or what you've seen, but that's what we're trying to do all the time, you know, it here goes, create awareness and reduce that stigma. But Medicare sure can help. Sure. Yeah, it's something that's developing. We're following that. Thanks for giving us some historical context there that just because there's a bill that's being submitted doesn't mean it will change anything in the immediate future. We'll see. And my other question that I wanted to bring up and point that I wanted to bring up for any listener here is that if someone's getting a hearing aid for tinnitus, there's specific features in the hearing aid that may be desirable. And Ergo may or may not have those features depending on what the person needs or wants or what a professional recommends. So I wanted to add a sort of disclaimer and just a really information here to anyone listening that if you're interested in hearing aids for tinnitus, it's best to speak to a professional who can look at any data, ask you the right questions, recommend a specific product because oftentimes sound therapy through the hearing aid is a great benefit as well as Bluetooth streaming. And Ergo has some limitations with that because the device is so small in the ear that there's some engineering limitations of at least right now in the current model, that Bluetooth streaming from a phone isn't there and internal sound therapy like white noise, pink noise isn't there. Not to say that 
doesn't help patients with tinnitus because I know it does. So I wanted to add that for any listener of the importance of having a professional guide someone through the process. I know Ergo, you guys have a lot of professionals on your team. That's also my group. We have a lot of professionals. That's what we do. So yeah. how, how do you how do you guys walk through that process? And what do you say to someone who says, I have tinnitus, I'm looking for help. And what kind of hearing aids will help my tinnitus? How do you train your team on that? So I, I think you're bringing up a really good point. In a big picture, you know, what you do will never, I mean, what Pure Tinnitus is doing, Ben, and your team is such a benefit to people because not everybody you know, especially in the days of COVID is comfortable going in and having in-person consultations with professionals to receive, you know, tinnitus therapy. So none of us are going to provide a catch-all solution for everybody. Ergo knows that, you know, our expertise lies in, you know, building a hearing aid that is virtually invisible, that sounds great, that's easy to use, that we make easy to purchase, but we still provide, like you said, we have over 50 hearing professionals to counsel and consult, you know, with our clients. That being said, if we talk to somebody on the phone whose tinnitus is severe, and that's their main complaint, we immediately get them in the hands of one of our hearing professionals. And if we feel that they are better served by going to a a tinnitus specialist that's local to their area for face-to-face treatment, sound therapy, you know, then we'll make that referral. We've also made referrals directly to you. You We don't follow whether or not they've come up, but, but, you know, there's a number of people on our team that know about their tinnitus. So I think that's what's good is that as an industry, we need to be partnering together to, to help out. But but you're right. I mean, Ergo is not, we're not going to be for severe tinnitus a solution, but we are a solution for people that have mild tinnitus where mm-hmm. it's part of their hearing loss solution. And you know that if you can fit somebody with it's a lot of time they can receive benefit from just ambient noise, you know, coming in. So. Absolutely. And great, I, great. I, I was just recording a podcast with an ENT physician from Germany. And we talked about different subgroups of tinnitus. And one of the major subgroups that we're most familiar with is the cochlear subgroup where cochlear hearing loss can lead to cochlear tinnitus and hearing aid with amplification is oftentimes enough to treat that very effectively. Is that what you found when you're asking follow-ups about, hey, has your tinnitus changed with hearing aids? Yeah, it, we, we actually do. So, you know, I think it's, you know, one, one important piece of this is that when you're fitting hearing aids in the Ergo business model, or you know whether you're in person, is that having hands-on follow-up carry during the trial period and beyond is critical. And our team does that. So everybody that buys an Ergo device gets followed during their trial period and beyond from one of our 50 plus hearing professionals. And we do, when we know that tinnitus is a concern and it's notated in their um, chart, mm-hmm. is that we do ask them subjectively if they're noticing relief and so forth. And so we do document that progress. And there have been times where it doesn't improve and, you know, we'll ask the client to return the device and consider, you know, moving elsewhere to where they can get the help that they need. So it's all about achieving the best outcome. Yeah, it is. Talk me through what is on your radar for the next six months either as a professional in in the industry of hearing and audiology or as Steve Egan, as the head of sales development at Ergo, what is front and center on your company's mind? And you guys went public about six to 12 months ago. So I'm sure that created some changes and some new energy. What's fresh on your mind for the next six months? So I, I think there's, there's a few, I mean, as Ergo, you know, one of our, we have several priorities, but for me and my role as sales development, I work very closely with the team developing overall corporate strategies. And one of the things that we're working on right now is how can we build off of, you know, Ergo's direct to consumer model by offering Ergo in person? And what we're trying to figure out, Ben, is like, do we offer Ergo? Do we figure out a path to offer it through the traditional audiology hearing instrument specialist role in their brick and mortar offices? Or do we find kind of different different places where people may go. And we've experimented with some different retail strategies and we're still trying to figure that out. Um, so we've got a number of pilots underway right now to figure out what our retail in-person experience uh, strategy may ultimately look like. We are talking with licensed hearing professionals to see what, you know, if there's a role there. I think that 
that that could be very interesting. So that's one of the things. Another big piece that's important um, that I look at personally within Ergo is- May I, may I interrupt you? Because I want to yeah, make a comment please. on the last, the last point. Yeah, go for it. When, go for when it. I was a doctoral extern, we call it, but really it's a residency. When I was in my audiology yeah. residency at UCSF in San Francisco, big medical center, ivory tower hospital clinic type place is great. And when I was working there, I was working with the patient on fitting them for premium hearing aids, the classic receiver in canal style. And uh, they sent me an email and they said, hey, have you, what about Ergo? Would that work for me? And this can put the professional in a place of, well, I don't know if it would work for you. I don't know the product. And if I do know the product, there's no financial incentive for me to tell you that it might work for you. So it can create this sensitivity where as a clinic, it was not in our best interest to even entertain the idea that Ergo would work for them. But as the patient, as the consumer, as the individual, as the customer, they did a good job of learning that they had options outside of just their traditional hearing aids. And then the next point is, what is my role as a professional to be as objective, unbiased, and helpful as possible to explain all the options, the pros and cons, and based on the, all the data we have of why Ergo or traditional hearing aids may or may not be the right choice. And that was a little Ergo story for you from years ago. No, that, that's great. And you know, that that leads me to a point that I know you and I were chatting about um, not too long ago that, you know, this is more of a, look, I'll, I'll get off on my soapbox here for just a second. When I talk to other audiologists, you know, in or hearing professionals in the field, there's this belief that there's only one right way to purchase hearing aids. And that is go see, go see a hearing professional, get a hearing test in a sound booth and buy a traditional device that averages $4,500 a pair. We all know that. However, if that is going to be our mindset, we know that consumers look at hearing aids as more of a commodity, whether we like it or not as audiologists. And if we know that in, in my 30 plus years of being in this field, we've never budged the seven year window of how long it takes people to get hearing help. So if somebody's first entry into the hearing care space of getting help is Ergo, $500 PSAP, whatever it may be, if it gets them hearing better and realizing what life is like to hear better, we all win as an industry. And that's what uh, I am a firm believer in because not everybody's cut out to wear Ergo, not everybody's cut out to go to the white ivory tower place you were talking about and buy a hearing aid. Not everybody's cut out to buy a $300 piece app that they could get at Walmart. You know, it's, but for those people that feel that that works for them, who are you or me to say that they're wrong? You know, so that's my soapbox that I'll, I'll get off now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you had a second point that something else that was, that was big on, uh, on your mind. Oh, um, yeah, I think as far as, you know, what we can do better as an industry is stop talking so much about the widgets, talking about the hearing aid is I, I and Ergo needs to do a better job at this, I feel, is that we have an opportunity to build more, you know, anecdotes, stories, experiences on what better hearing sounds like and what better hearing looks like and demonstrate that to people. And I think we need to involve consumers more that are successfully using hearing aids, whether it's on a celebrity level or whether it's down to just, you know, Joe Smith that went into their local professional, but we need to show more and more times to overcome stigma and some of those barriers about whether hearing aids will work for me by creating better, showing what out better outcomes look like. And I know that we can do more as year ago with that. And I hope our industry kind of takes the lead on that as well. What comes to my mind, because I'm very much into the video space, the podcast interview space over the last six months, I've interviewed probably six or seven patients of mine that I've had who I've been following for six months or more for tin industry training. And those videos are the highest performing videos on average on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Of course, tinnitus is a tricky medical condition and seeing anyone succeed with it in a real way is wow. Someone described it as oxygen for the tinnitus community. Yeah. And how can we do that for those who are getting help with hearing? I want to explore that as well of bringing people on, share your story, what worked for you. I've done some of this because some of the patients I've had the most success with have been using hearing aids. 
and they've been sharing their story. One patient was on the podcast earlier and they said, I love my hearing aids. They help me so much. And those kinds of stories are what we're talking about. So Absolutely. I'm very much a proponent of video, text, pictures. How can we share that online to promote the benefits of our industry and the technology developments? Because when we do that, it inspires people. And like you said, takes some of that stigma away and makes it a little more yeah relatable. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't agree with you more. And I think that, you know, forward thinking companies like what you're doing, what we're doing, there are others out there that are doing a good job at, at getting the message out there. You know, that I think that's where we have to focus, you know, but the more we talk about the widget, the Bluetooth, all of those things, I think we all tune that stuff out as consumers. I know I do. I know a lot of the people we call in about ear go. If our people talk about the Bluetooth, the charger, all the, the the mechanical things, it doesn't really help somebody move forward and make a decision. So I'm glad to hear you. Yeah. So I'm on board. I have been making an effort to review all of the hearing aids, especially the online hearing aids that are available to consumers. I've been making an effort to review them on my YouTube channel. The Eargo Neo Hi-Fi is released at the time that this podcast is released. The Eargo 5 review video on my YouTube channel may be out. So that's a good a good place to end it here from my side. Right. That For those who are interested in Eargo or other independent reviews of different hearing technology, there's some resources on my YouTube channel. Steve, if you have any last words for our community here, which is right now at this time, mainly individuals with tinnitus and a lot of individuals with hearing loss. If you have any last words, I want to say thank you. And you can close out this podcast episode. Well, thank you, Ben. I appreciate the invite and I look forward to, you know, future collaboration with you. And, uh, you know, if any of your listeners out there um, are interested in, in investigating Eargo, we've got a team of people that are there to help and answer questions and and so forth. And uh, we just pr appreciate this opportunity to have you invite me on. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Thank you so much, Steve. And for all your listeners out there, see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.